not guilty on all four charges. Conspiracy to kidnap, conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction, possession of an unregistered firearm and a semi-automatic rifle. And we are attempting now to reach our Justin Bachman, who is live in Grand Rapids. In the meantime, no verdict was reached against Adam Fox on conspiracy charges to kidnap, conspiracy use of a weapon of mass destruction, and that means that this mistrial could be, again, this is a partial, a partial verdict. Now, we want to get out to our Justin Bachman, who is joining us live downtown with more on the situation. Justin, this is all happening very quickly. What can you tell us? Good afternoon, Kirk. You are exactly right. Very quickly is how all of this went down. We were called back up to the courtroom, and then the jury came in saying that they had reached a decision on everything. But that decision wasn't necessarily a verdict. For some of those cases and some of those charges, the decision was that they couldn't become unanimous. But knowing that they weren't going to agree or have people switch on either side led them to those final decisions. Like you were saying, uh, Daniel Harris has been found not guilty, as has Brandon Caserta. But those mistrials have been declared for Barry Croft Jr. and for Adam Fox. We are now waiting for the attorneys and the teams to come out. But those two men we know are completely free from those charges. They will be able to go about their days, go home. And everything after this trial has wrapped up for them being Brandon Caserta and for Daniel Harris. That Daniel Harris had a completely clean slate of not guilties on all of those charges. And the second that last charge was read out for that short barrel firearm, tears gasps erupting from that courtroom from his family and from him hugging his lawyer a moment that he clearly has been waiting for for a long time this trial has taken 31 days it started about a month ago exactly a month ago on march 8th was when that jury was selected and now after a week of deliberation they have finally reached their answers again we know that some of them are not verdicts they are mistrials and so what happens now with barry croft jr and with adam fox we are still waiting to see we do not know exactly what the government's next steps will be but for brandon caserta and for daniel harris we do know that those have, that those two have been found not guilty we are now currently outside as you can see waiting as this door is about to open we know that the lawyers and their teams are going to be coming down at some point you're going to hear from them as soon as we can now, Judge Yonker, when he was dismissing the jury, he thanked them for the service that they gave, the time that they spent over this past month. And it has been a long month without breaks, with the jury deliberations. We know that there was a brief pause because one of those jury members had COVID, somebody important to the case had COVID-19. And it has all been leading up to this. Now, in his final remarks to the jury, aside from thanking them, he said that it is not an easy job. Some of them will be going about their days, going right back to everything that they did before this trial started. For some, they're going to be talking to media, talking to these lawyers, but he wanted to make sure that it is their decision to make sure that they knew that. Now, we do know that these four men were on trial for the conspiracy to kidnap. We don't have any guilty verdicts for that. Again, Brandon Caserta, Daniel Harris have been found not guilty. Kirk, as those lawyers come out, as their teams come out, we will come back to you for now. That's that breaking in. We will have more information as it comes out. We also will let you know what the federal government's plan is once we know what that is. And it's been a long time coming, a long trial that we've been waiting for these answers. And now we finally have some, not necessarily all, but a little bit of closure in this case. It's been a long time coming. Kirk. Absolutely, Justin. If when things develop, we will go back out to you. We want to remind you that two other men charged in this plot, Ty Garbin and Caleb Franks, had already pled guilty to conspiracy in this case. And during their testimony, Daniel Harris's attorney called the men liars. Now, Ty Garbin pleaded guilty in 2021 and was sentenced to a little more than six years in prison. Garbin t told investigators, oh, I understand lawyers are talking now. Let's go back out live to gr downtown Grand Rapids. Uh, beyond reasonable doubt, based on the evidence we put forward, but we still believe in the jury system, uh, and really there's not too much more I could say at this time. I appreciate the time the jury put in, listened to a lot of evidence, deliberated quite a bit. Uh, we have two defendants that are awaiting trial, and we'll get back to work on that. You go to trial so charges will be refiled? Yeah. Thank you. Did this you think is that a statement uh, on the FBI at all? In the is this a statement on the uh, FBI at all? 
Okay, we want to also remind you, you know, this entire case came to light by the work of an informant who was working on behalf of the FBI. The FBI infiltrated this group of six men, broke into the plan with a series of arrests. This was October of 2020, just as the presidential election campaign neared a close. Now, the informant, known only as Big Dan, became particularly close with Adam Fox during this entire investigation, secretly recording hours of conversations, participating in gun training and making road trips to northern Michigan to look at the governor's vacation home. This informant, we also learned, was paid roughly $50,000 by the FBI for his work on this case. And as I was mentioning earlier, Garbin, who pled guilty, told the investigators the goal of this entire plan was to get Whitmer before the election and create enough chaos. Their goal, according to court records, was to stop Joe Biden from winning the presidency. Caleb Franks pleaded guilty to conspiracy, and as part of their plea deal, both agreed to test to buy against the four men on trial to help with the prosecution. Now, this entire case, as I said, came to light a number of while. This, this, this particular trial isn't going on now for approximately three, three weeks. And we want to go over some of the charges. And again, this has been just a partial verdict. Count one, which was conspiracy to kidnap, which all four men faced. The government says that they've been planning to kidnap the governor for several months throughout 2020. Count two was conspiracy to use weapons of mass destruction, which only Croft, Harris, and Fox were facing. Possession of an unregistered destructive device, which the government said that Croft and Harris made a firework, which was actually wrapped in pennies for the sole purpose to inflict harm and possession of a short barrel firearm, which only Daniel Harris was facing. Again, for Fox, no verdict, Croft, no verdict, and for Harris, all four counts, not guilty for Daniel Harris. All of these here, he was found not guilty. So again, this has been a long um, couple of weeks for the jurors, the alternate jurors, the judge in this case admitting as such, as much when the jurors came back earlier this afternoon saying that they just were unable to get a consensus on all of the charges, that they had only been able to do a partial verdict in this case. Again, for Barry Croft, no verdict reached at all. We um, have not heard yet anything from Governor Whitmer. There has been no statement that I'm aware of from the governor. As soon as she does make a statement, we, of course, will pass that along to you. Do we want to go back to uh, Justin downtown right now, you guys? Not yet, okay. So just to recap, a partial verdict um, has been made in the conspiracy trial of four men. Uh, accused of trying to kidnap our governor. A partial verdict because for two of the defendants, no verdict was reached, and for the other two, not guilty on all four counts, or all four, all four charges, I should say, they were facing. This trial lasted roughly 16, 17 days, these jury deliberati deliberations. They were not sequestered, however, during this process. But as we get more information, as, as, as the various attorneys assembled to the media that has assembled in downtown Grand Rapids. We're going to bring it to you. We uh, now understand they're going to go back and listen in right now, so take, take a listen. Case, obviously, with acquittals occurring with Mr. Caserta and Mr. Harris, uh, says a lot about what's going on in the case and the proofs. And, um, you know, we're ready to go. And unfortunately, I didn't throw any of my papers out, so we'll what, be ready Chris, for another what trial. What does this say about the FBI's Adam have a reaction? Uh, a Adam is uh, uh, disappointed that he's going to be detained a bit longer, but we're waiting for a second trial and we'll eventually get what we want to get out of this, which is the truth and the, and, and the justice I think Adam is entitled to. What is this saying about the FBI and their use of informants and, and how they... Well, the case is still continuing case. really for me, so I would really like to reserve comment. I think the, uh, the outcome today demonstrates what I think about the case and, and where I think there's reasonable yes, doubt. And uh, a lot of that stemmed from... Uh, uh, our concerns regarding the behavior of the FBI. And obviously the U.S. Attorney's Office has to decide whether to try him again. Have you been told that's going to happen? I, I don't know. I have not talked to the U.S. Attorney, but you know, I'm, I'm assuming that given the nature of the case, it probably goes forward. What do you think this hinged on with this jury? I have no idea. I don't know. So, I'm, I wasn't in the in privy to the jury deliberations. I, you know, I only know what I know, which is uh, my side of the case and, and the case of the government. Is it hard for Adam to, I mean, to see the other two, the two others being cleared? I don't know. It's I mean, still pretty fresh here. Yeah. So, yeah. Where do you think so we'll see how, how it shakes out. But, you know, we're what looking. What was your reaction when you heard the not guilty and then no verdict? 
Oh, well, uh, would, you, would you call it stunning? Uh, no, I, I, I don't know that it's stunning. I expected uh, something to happen and something did happen, kind of, for my client. Right, so right. we're going to have to start over and, uh, and looking forward to uh, continuing uh, to make sure that Adam Fox has the representation that he's in, entitled to in our court system. So everybody's entitled to a defense and a defense attorney. And so I was pleased to play that role for, for Adam Fox and uh, my representation will continue. So and, thank you and, very and you much. Are appointed, right? That's correct. Yes. And you will continue on the case. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. I don't Now, we do want to remind you, though, that the, all along the defense attorneys had portrayed their clients as weekend warriors prone to wild big talk, but not a lot of action. Again, we want to go down to our Justin Bachman, who is outside of the federal court building in downtown Grand Rapids. Justin. Yeah, hi again, Kirk. There was a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts. We did just see the family of Daniel Harris going on. Jacob, if you want to walk with me, we see more people coming out of that courtroom. We see another family walking away, potentially other jury members. There's a lot of moving parts here. We're going to try and keep you in as we follow along with everything. I'm trying to identify who that is walking away. There's a lot of people in that crowd. I'm not 100% sure who we have right there. We did see, again, the family of Daniel Harris walking out with a bag of things. He has been cleared. The man was found not guilty on all of the charges, and that is very, very good news for him. He has been found not guilty on all of them, and that means that he is about allowed to go about his day, go about his life. The rest, those are not necessarily cleared up just yet. We just heard from the attorney for Adam Fox who says that Adam is disappointed that he has to stay a little bit longer, but he's remaining hopeful. There are a lot of moving parts. We are going to try and get you the word from everybody as we get it. We also are still learning a little bit of what the government's plan is going to do. They did not say that they will not revisit charges. They did not fully commit to recharging Barry Croft Jr. and Adam Fox, but we will wait and find out that. They did come out and briefly touch on it, but didn't confirm one way or the other. They did say that they believe in the jury process, and we will wait to see if they are going to be trying another case against those two men after this mistrial because of that deadlocked jury. Let's go back and see what is going on as we wait for more of these attorneys to come out. A lot of people coming out with comments. Again, we saw the family of Daniel Harris, who was burst into tears the moment that that verdict came out, not guilty on all charges, hugs with his lawyer, hugs with his family. A audible, audible cry from that family as that verdict was reached. All right, Justin, thank you. We want to recap now. Jurors have acquitted two of the four defendants of conspiracy to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer, uh, but could not agree on a verdict for two others. Now, these verdicts on the charges against Adam Fox, Barry Croft Jr., Daniel Harris, and Brendan Caserta were read just about an hour ago in federal court in downtown Grand Rapids. All four men, Adam Fox, Barry Croft Jr., Daniel Harris, Brennan, were charged with conspiracy, all of this for allegedly planning to kidnap the governor while she was at her vacation home. Brandon Caserta was found not guilty on conspiracy to kidnap. Daniel Harris found not guilty on all four charges, conspiracy to kidnap, conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction, possession of an unregistered firearm, and a semi-automatic rifle. And no verdict was reached against Adam Fox, Adam Fox rather, on charges of conspiracy conspiracy to kidnap, conspiracy to use a weapon of mass destruction. So there we are. Now we will have a complete update, a complete wrap up, a full 90 minutes of news and information as this unfolds beginning at 5 o'clock this afternoon. If something else warrants us breaking into programming, we of course will. But in the meantime, we now will rejoin, rejoin normal programming.